Hi there. So what would I normally or ordinarily do if I were not an engineer? The first thing I would do, just like I said in my previous episode, would be to give my drawings, my permit, to the engineer for him to be able to know what to do. So the engineer picks my drawing and the first thing I expect him to do for me is to give me a quote. Now quotes can be given in phases. So I will start with what I call the substructure. The substructure is what you call the foundation, the footings, the hardcore field, and the oversight concrete. That is the, the, the base. That is what serves as the starting point or the culminating point for your building. So the engineer at this point ought to give me the quote for me to study it. If it is within my budget, I can tell him to go ahead. Now, in that quote, there are a few things that one should expect to have. Number one, you're going to build my home for me. How do I store my materials? Should I build a temporary shed to be able to house them? How do I do that? In this episode, I'll look at two things, the very things to start with. What should I do first? Should I build a fence wall or should I build a temporary hoarding? You want to ask, what is hoarding? Hoarding is providing a fence or an area around you so that you don't have people coming in or encroaching into the area that you are building. The reason why most workers who use some or dress the way I'm dressed is, is supposed to be able to tell anybody within the perimeters of the construction that there's something that is going on. Safety is off utmost importance when it comes to construction. So obviously the first thing that I would advise that you should do is to build a fence wall. Why wouldn't I go for a temporary fence? Well, what materials do we use for temporary fence? We use wood, roofing sheets, and sometimes uh, any other material that can be able to cover us. After the construction, all those things goes to waste. And what am I doing? I'm trying to cut costs. So I would ordinarily choose to build a fence wall, put a gate around it. That way, anybody who jumps my wall is a thief. Anybody who does not go through the gate is seen as a thief. And perhaps get a security for my project to be well secured for me. So I will obviously go for a fence wall. Once I build my fence wall around the perimeters of my building, I'm good to go. Unless, of course, I'm building my house in a gated community. That way, the gated community serves again as a form of hoarding for me so that I know that my materials, my workforce, whoever is going to work for me, they are all secure. How do I store my materials? It's, it's, it's one important thing that sometimes we, we take for granted. One would ask which materials? We know we have to do with cement, sand, chippings, wood, and its agents are the very prelim that we're talking about. If you are able to build a temporary shed, it's able to help you because cement is one of the materials that is, is, is actually a binding agent. And because of how porous it is, once you leave it, and you have water attacking it, there is an issue with it, it begins to cake. So ordinarily, there is a rule in construction. We, in cement, we say first in, first out. So in building your shed, let me advise all, you're supposed to build your shed with two entrances, one to the left, one to the right. When materials come to site, when cement comes to site, you pack them towards the left-hand corner of the building so that when each time cement is coming in, it will be offloaded through the left, it will be taken out through the right. Because the ones that comes in first must go out first. So first in, first out. So that you're able to save your material. Again, you have to be able to raise a shed because when the cement uh, is not having room temperature, the temperature drops, the cement will ordinarily start caking. And so you need to be able to store it and store it well. Thank you so much. The name as usual is Desmond. I'm grateful.